We have waterfalls, we have bridges, we have tunnels with landscaping on top, which is flowers and trees. Those all have to be held up structurally. It was all engineered by my mother. At the time, she was the only woman involved in a commercial capacity in model trains. I was in the habit of not listening to people and doing things my way. <laughs> she stopped her business for two and a half years to build him the most amazing model train museum in private hands in America. And everybody thought I was crazy, thought they were in for a big surprise. This is the famous Outdoor Garden Railroad, which is one of the largest, and in my opinion, best in the United States on a private property. There are over 7,000 linear feet of track and was built by my mother with help from her friends. When I started to build this, it was sort of uncharted territory. They're very popular in Europe. Here, there weren't so many. But I've always been the kind of person that dances to a different drummer. When my mother was a young girl, she built these elaborate model railroads, and girls didn't usually play with trains. They played with dolls in those days. I would run those trains all over my house. They went under the dining room table. I started making paper mache tunnels. Now, we cut to me. I was about six years old. My grandparents bought my first Lionel train set. And my father quickly pushed me out of the way and said, I'm taking over, these are my trains now. And my mother then quickly pushed him out of the way and said, you don't know anything about trains, I do. And what she did was she took her skills in building model trains that she had developed with my father as a hobby, and she decided to make it into a business, designing personalized model train layouts for people in all scales. I do one that one side is the winter and the other side is the summer. I'm not gonna tell you how I do that because that's one of my tr tricks. So this is G scale, garden scale, which is very, very big. And you saw the train museum, which is Lionel O scale, all the way down to itty bitty tiny trains, which go down as small as Z scale, but she only worked as small as N scale, which is still pretty small. She built furniture. I love my train tables. What they are is a piece of furniture, effectively. And you can look down on the top put your martini glass on top, and there are the trains running around. So follow me, and this will be an example of the way my mother has engineered this. I'm gonna use a cane as a pointer. Here, the train is flat. Then this is on a slightly different level. That's a third level. Above it is a fourth level, and then we have a fifth level going past the mountain and the waterfall. Most famous model railroads, let's say, at big theme parks that are outside like this in Orlando, Florida, where the mouse lives. I'm not gonna say the name. First, they're not this large. Secondly, they are all flat. This railroad is on many levels because as an artist, my mother likes things to be interesting and she likes to do things differently. After she graduated college, my mother moved to Paris to be an artist. She painted in oil and was quite talented and very good. All the buildings have been custom made and all of the people have to be painted every year. People ask if we cover it up in the winter, and my mother runs the trains in the snow. I had a snowplow train. Of course, it would, didn't work worth a damn. These trains and train tracks were all built by aristocrats. These are quite accurate as model trains go in this scale. For the rivet counters, 
who count the number of rivets on the train. They will send me an email to say, this is train talk. Do you know that your freight consist is not valid? Why not? Well, you have to put the freight cars in a certain way. These people are totally insane and need to be put in an institution. <laughs> over here is the railroad turnaround, and over here is Chicago's Union Station. On top are actual asphalt shingles, and you see them layered and layered and layered on top. Now look over there. Yeah. <laughs> over here is the farm. My mother always has a little farm on her railroads. My father was a well-known trial attorney, and so here you can see the jail, where unfortunately some of his clients end up, not most of them, just some. I wasn't the one that was mad about trains. My husband was. For years and years, they had this passion together. Then my father was diagnosed with stage four cancer. And she said to him, if you live, I will build you the most amazing model train museum that anybody has in private hands. It took two and a half years. Six people helping, but I'm not the one who stands back. No, I was all in. It gave him something to look forward to. Every day he would come home and see what the progress was. And she finished it, and he was able to run it a few times, and then he passed away. So this is a great love letter from my mother to my father. Most of the models were built from scratch by my mother. Some are made out of wood, some models are made out of plastic and are kit bashed. Kit bashing is when they take a kit and meld it together with a different kit to get a totally different building. And of course, with her artistic background, she was very into the models. There are many different automations in the train museum. Now, some of these are pre-built. Others were custom made by people who knew how to make the automations. Of course, my mother designed everything. What took a long, long time was to develop the scenery that you see on the back walls. She employed a series of photographers, went around Chicago and took pictures of various buildings, then printed onto wallpaper and put them together into a skyline. So this layout starts in Barrington, Illinois. We go through farm country because when we first came to Barrington over 50 years ago, this was all farmland. And from Barrington, we go 43 miles into the city of Chicago. Now, because she knows that both young and old would come and enjoy this layout, if you look underneath, you'll see a level which a two, three, four-year-old will be able to see that an adult really can't see. So as we move from Barrington, we come to Lincoln Park. Now underneath this is a hidden nuclear missile silo and the missiles actually shoot. My mother custom built Wrigley Field and all the ball players were custom made. They wind up, they pitch. It's all very, very exciting at Wrigley Field. Pritzker Pavilion was designed by Frank Gehry, the famous architect, and my mother made it using sheet metal. My mother created the bean, which is also known as Cloudgate 9. She molded it herself out of clay using pictures and then had it cast in a kind of an aluminum. All of these are bascule bridges and they, by the flick of a button, come up automatically. There are 64 switches on this model railroad. 
We can run about seven or eight trains at once. Oh, well, it's very complicated. You can see some of the things underneath here, all the wiring, and oh, there's just miles and miles of wire. My bad. <laughs> they crash quite often, eh? but uh, no. these are the old school style, and these are very durable. You know, from the 50s, they're bulletproof. Right now, there's a lot of maintenance. We have to lubricate everything, I have water features. Some of those pumps are not working yet. Now I've got a problem with the signals. There's something wrong there. <laughs> Here, it takes a village to keep the whole show running. So to offset the cost of running a big estate like this and the trains and keeping everything up, we have tour groups that come through. We have weddings and birthdays and my mother is the train that keeps the whole thing on track. The coolest thing I have ever made were my children. <laughs> and then the second coolest thing I ever made were my railroad. I want to thank you for coming. Well, thank you for having us. Oh, not at all. It's my pleasure. Is Andrew in the picture? No. Are that? you sure? He hey, is, Andrew, he is get not. out of the picture. <laughs> I got to tell everybody what to do.